Welcome to ECLEMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed moment and we defined the moment as a turning effect of a force. We also discussed moment of a force, which we defined as the product of a force and the perpendicular distance from the pivot. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss factors which affect moment of a force. And then later, we're going to look at the activities in which a force produces a turning effect. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to discuss factors which affect moment of a force. And then later, discuss some of the examples in which a force produces a turning effect. One of the factors that affect moment of a force is the amount of force which is applied. And in this case, the moment of a force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the force applied. And when we talk about the directly proportional, we mean the larger the force, the greater the turning effect. Remember, our formula was moment of a force is equal to force times perpendicular distance. So in this case, it means when you increase force, also moment increases. If you decrease force, also moment will decrease. But in this case, if I can give an example which is more elaborate, if you have a pivot there, then you have a meter rule lying on this pivot. And then if this meter rule is a distance, let's say uh, of a distance one, one meter, then you have a force here, which is 20 Newton. Then in this case, if you calculate moment, remember this force is perpendicular to this pivot, this is the pivot. So moment in this case is going to be force times distance, which is the same as 20 Newton times one meter, which will give us a 20 Newton meter. But if you have another set where now you have the same same setup, in this case, it is also one meter, the distance here, D, D also is one meter. But in this case, now you increase the force from 20 to 40 Newton. And if now you calculate moment in this case, moment is equal to force times distance, which is the same as 40 times one meter. In this case, it will be 40 Newton meter. So in this case, you can see we have kept the distance a constant, that's one, one on, in both cases. As we increase the force, the moment also increases. If we decrease the force, moment will decrease. So in this case, that's why it is easier to open a door when you are applying a large force, like an adult opening a door, and it will be very hard for a kid to open a door because they have a very small amount of force. So another factor that affects moment of a force is the perpendicular distance from the point of support. And in this case, the longer the distance, the larger the moment. Therefore, it means the distance is directly, or the perpendicular distance is directly proportional to the moment. And if I can give an example in this case, then it can be, if we have a, a vulcan like that, then we have a meter rule and here we have one meter. Then if you have a force of 20 Newton, in this case moment will be force times distance, which is going to be 20 times one, which will give us 20 Newton meter. And now if you use a half meter rule, if you use a half meter rule, it means it is 0 0.5 meter, that is our distance. If you apply the same force, that is 20 Newton, then in this case, moment is going to be force times distance, which is going to be 20 Newton times 0 0.5 meter, which is the same as 20 times half, which will give us 10 Newton meter. So as you can see, when we decrease the distance, the moment decreases. And when we increase the distance, moment also increases. So in this case, the, the angle at which this force is also uh, inclined to this point of support depends or determines the moment which will be produced. And in this case, sometimes we can get a force which is not perpendicular to the point of action. 
like if we have a meter rule lying like this which is which is uh, from this pivot then we have a force let's say this force now is acting like this is not forming a 90 degrees at this angle so before we calculate this moment what we do if we know this distance let's say it is two meter and then this is the pivot and then now for us to calculate moment here we cannot use this distance directly what we do we use that principle of mathematics sokatoa sokatoa i don't know the correct format of that it is sokatoa that is sine is equals to opposite over hypotenuse cos is equals to adjacent over hypotenuse and then we have tan is equals to positive over adjacent so in this case you will move up to a point where this line will form a 90 or this force will form a 90 degrees to that point so if you know this angle then you can use this principle directly to get this angle line x there now this line is the one which is 90 degrees to the point of support and then you will be able to use this line here or if you know the magnitude of this force up to this point here if you know this distance d then you can use this one and this one then you use cosine rule or another rule but you get the distance which is 90 degrees to the point of support and that is what you are going to use so what you are going to realize is that when you increase or when you decrease this angle less than 90 then the moment is also going to decrease and if you increase it more than 90 the moment will also decrease but now if it's 90 that is when you have maximum moment so some of the activities which turning effect take place is like when you are opening and closing a door like in this case if you have a door on diagram one the handle of this door here and the and the inches the inches are at this point at the end of this door here this way we have the inches and then we have a handle here this distance when it is long that's when the door can be opened easily but if you keep it this distance short or if you try to open this door from the middle here it will require you to use a lot of force because remember moment is equals to force times distance so if you have a long distance from the inches the moment will be very high the door will open easily but if you have a very short distance it means the moment will be very small and therefore it will require you a lot of energy to open the door another case where turning effect uh, occurs is when you are closing a lid of a container like a geometrical instrument in this case this geometrical instrument has some inches here and then you are going to open it from this side so whenever you are opening it it's causing a turning effect this lid will be turning as you open and also turning back when you close Another scenario is using a scissor on a garden shear. Like in the diagram here, we have a garden shear. If you push these uh, handles of a, a garden shear close to each other, these also inches will turn, will move close to each other and they will cut. But if you pull them away from this point here, if you pull them away like that, also these cutting edges will move away. So in, the, in this process, there will be a turning effect another scenario is children playing a seesaw is also a good example in which a force produces a turning effect as this one is down the other one is up as the one is down the other one also moves up so another case is a wheelbarrow lifting heavy loads when you are using a wheelbarrow the wheelbarrow handles act as a lever so in this case if you handle if you have heavy loads inside this wheelbarrow and you handle very far away from this uh, where the loads are you will require very small energy because now you are increasing the distance from the pivot but if you try to handle close to this wheelbarrow where the loads are you will require a lot of energy for you to lift this wheelbarrow another case where the turning effect takes place is using a screwdriver whenever you are using a screwdriver let's say it's like this so if you have a screwdriver like this when you move this side on this side the, the other side will be turning like that so in the process we are going to cause a turning effect or it's going to turn and we're going to discuss this when we will be discussing a couple or the anti-parallel forces 
then the last example in which uh, turning effects occur from a force is a beam balance in use. When you have a beam balance, remember a beam balance, the one that we use to measure mass. In this case, if you have a beam balance like that, then you have a support here. When you put some meat on this side or some uh, mass in this side, then the other side is going to move up. Then when you put another one on the other side, then it will be balanced. And when it achieves a state of equilibrium, which we are going to discuss later, we are going to see what must happen for it to be in a state of equilibrium. So that will mark the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss more examples, especially on the principle of moments.